So we've had some interest in a video where we look at Michael Harding's green gold oil paint. It's a pretty spectacular colour. It's like no other uh, pigment I can think of. Um, it's very mobile, so that makes me think it must be a dye pigment of some kind. You know, it's quite loose, spreads very easily, and it feels like it would just keep spreading forever. Um, so it's thin, if you like. It would be great for glazes. You can see it's got a really glass-like transparency to it, very deep colour. Um, and some people confuse it, or it seems to come in the same family at least, with crinacridone gold. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the similarity is. There must be something in the chemistry or the same family of pigments, I'm guessing. Um, but you can see when spread thinly, they look very similar. But when in greater quantities, obviously they're very different colours. But when you glaze with them or if you use them very thinly, I could see this, the colour note that you get. There's definitely a lot in common there with the um, quinacridone gold. Now, if you're interested in what the gold is capable of, there is a YouTube video on that already that I made a couple of years ago. Um, so we're going to stick with uh, the green gold for this video. So as usual with a transparent colour, I'm interested in what does it do when I add white to it. So down in the bottom here, I've got some titanium white. Uh, so I'm just going to mix a little bit of that in and see what we get. It's a kind of, it's a really nice colour actually. I wanted to say lemony but it isn't, it's softer than that, it's more sort of an olive, but a pale olive, but still really saturated, that's really interesting. So lightening it up isn't greying it, so it's obviously a really powerful pigment uh, because I'm adding quite a lot of titanium white here, which I would expect to have quite um, quite a greying effect, but it's not particularly. So that's really useful if you wanted a light but still vivid warm green. Um, for backlit foliage I'm thinking this would be really helpful. Um, I mean if I add a little bit of say bright yellow lake here, which is another transparent colour, um, to just, you could very quickly, I could see that getting very useful for backlit foliage in a still life or a landscape scene. Um, yeah, it's a really strong colour. So I was curious about what might happen if I lightened it with a light yellow as opposed to a white, but actually it's held its own against the white, so it may not be that important. Uh, lemon yellow can, can sometimes have a less cooling effect when you add it to a mix. Um, it's just eaten that lemon yellow, that's amazing. It's really powerful, this paint. Um, so yeah, it's, I guess it's stayed a bit richer. I'm gonna need loads of lemon yellow to get it to that value up there. Um, and actually, the difference is not that significant between adding lemon yellow or as opposed to adding white. I guess it's moving slightly more towards the blue when I'm adding the white to it. Uh, but yeah, a really punchy color, really powerful. So I figure if I put it with, um, just with the bright yellow lake, we should get some really vivid transparent yellow greens, I would imagine. So the bright yellow lake is the more lemony of the lakes. So it's a really vivid sort of acid yellow. So that makes a really powerful light yellow green or mid value, I suppose, actually with the yellow lake. But um, I say light because it feels like a green in the light. It's so vivid. Uh, that would be really handy as well for foliage. It can be really difficult to get vivid light greens, yellow greens, because they grey off so much when we lighten them up. So this is a gift, especially if you're working um, with glazes. So now to try it with some, it's some other more opposing colours and see where it goes if I mix it a bit. It is very dark because it's transparent, so I may have to add a touch of white to see what's actually happening with these mixes. But let's try it with a bit of phthalo. I just wanted to see how it holds up against one of the most powerful colours on the planet. Let's see what it does with a phthalo blue mixed in. Oh my word, that is beautiful. Look at that. Gosh, that's much greener than I expected. I, well, I kind of should have expected, I suppose, but um, I wondered if it would stay more olive, if it would stay softer. But the phthalo has made it into a really vivid green. Not completely unusable though, the redness, I suppose, of the gold, the green gold, makes it more natural than most greens you would get with a 
with a phthalo they can usually look pretty artificial uh, but it, yeah it's pretty convincing solid bottle green colour and then I thought what about with some alizarin claret to put it with its complement sort of <laughs> it's not a very green green is it it's a very warm green so I've chosen a cooler red um, but that's just making beautiful rusty browns and uh, not neutralizing it at all really just turning it into something beautiful <laughs> something else there's nothing very neutral about it it's a powerful warm color I think what I'm really noticing is it's it's very warming whatever I'm putting it with so here I've added a bit more green to that mix to try and get something more neutral in the sense of being halfway between red and green but still just so powerful that fiery note underneath it just comes through every mix I'm putting it into it's amazing it feels a little bit like Indian yellow red shade like the same family somehow um, so in the sense that the quinacridone gold also has that 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 really vivid warmth beneath it when you spread it thinly I see that in the Indian yellow red shade here as well so it feels like there's something in common with them all but yeah, what a cracking colour. I'm not sure I could neutralise that. I'd, I'd have to work really hard. I mean, I guess if I put um, blue into here now to neutralise the brownness, we probably could get to something quieter. Um, but why would you want to? It's so powerful and beautiful and rich. Um, I mean, it is making some beautiful, colourful blacks now down the bottom here. If we start mixing red and blue in with it, we're getting some really fantastic rich nutty browns and green blacks all sorts of variations down in here uh, but also let's just try flattening them a little bit and see where they go so lemon yellow into that green mix with phthalo that's just a really good simple solid green it's cleaner than I imagined it would it would be with that green gold and into this rusty red over here you could get some really gorgeous autumnal colours from it, I think. Some really lovely landscapey notes coming, coming from it as I'm adding red to it. It's more versatile than I thought it would be, but yet it has such a strong identity in all of the mixes, apart from perhaps this one. Um, I can still sort of taste it, you know, it's got a really strong flavour to it, which is a good thing, I think, in a colour. It can really create harmony through a painting if you've got a colour with a strong identity like this that kind of stitches all your mixes together. Um, yeah, it's a really useful colour, I think.